Today we're continuing on with an introduction to animals, and we're going to focus on a group called the Cnidarians. So what exactly is a Cnidarian, and why do we care about them? Let's start with some background information on Cnidarians. These are an ancient lineage of animals that go back well before the dinosaurs, goes back all the way to the Cambrian over 500 million years ago. And in fact, they may be 580 million years old, predating most other animal groups on the planet. There's about 11,000 species today, and they are quite diverse, and some of them are incredibly important for us. One of the things they have in common is radial symmetry. So what that means is you can take a cnidarian, and if you were to cut it in half right through the middle, each half would be the same. And they only have radial symmetry, and they have two germ layers. The ectoderm, which is the outer layer, and an endoderm, which is an inner layer. Now that's different than you and me because we're bilateral animals and we have an endoderm, a mesoderm, which is like a middle layer, and an ectoderm as well. But the group Cnidaria or Cnidarians get their name from something called a cnidocyte. These are really specialized cells found in the tentacles of all Cnidarians and these are what cause them to sting. They basically have a cell that shoots out a harpoon with a little packet of toxin in there and a lot of it is neurotoxic and for us it burns pretty bad and there are some Cnidarians out there that can kill you within about five minutes and others are harmless to us because they can't pierce our skin. Now overall there's about six classes of Cnidarians but I'm only going to talk about four of them today and these include the hydras which are called the hydrozoans, the sea wasp also known as the cubozoans, the true jellyfish known as scyphozoans, and the corals, which are the anthozoans. I'm going to start today with one of my favorite groups, the anthozoans. Antho means flower and zoan means animal. So these are flower animals. Anthozoans are incredibly important for coral reef and diversity in the, in the Earth's oceans. The paradox of corals is that they occur mostly in really clear water. Really clear water doesn't have a lot of nutrients. So how do these animals become so diverse and have such high productivity in these really nutrient poor, crystal clear waters? You know, those warm tropical waters we all wanna to go to at the beach. Well, it turns out that they have a symbiotic relationship with something called a zooxanthellae. Now the zooxanthellae are photosynthetic. So what happens is the corals, the animals are basically filter feeders. They stick out their tentacles and they bring in all kinds of like plankton and stuff that's floating in the water. They bring that into them and they digest it and the zooxanthellae actually live in the tissues of the corals and they can provide them with the nutrients they need. And then the zooxanthellae through photosynthesis, of course, take carbon dioxide and water and they make carbohydrates for the coral. Now, one of the interesting things about corals is they're beautiful. A lot of them anyway are really beautiful. They come in all these different shapes and colors. Some are soft coral, some are hard coral, some are stony corals. And it's the stony corals that, of course, form the reefs. But some corals are incredibly colorful because they produce all these different types of proteins to protect them from ultraviolet light. And the reefs formed by corals account for almost half of all the ocean's diversity. And in fact, to show you just how important they are, corals only account for about 1% or less of the entire ocean surface or the entire ocean's area. But yet, almost half the diversity is found on these coral reefs. Now, unfortunately, corals are facing a lot of problems. And one of the things is called coral bleaching. And in coral bleaching, what happens is the animal loses its symbiont, the zooxanthellae, and it actually dies. And they call it coral bleaching because these beautiful corals start looking white and then they die. And things that can cause this are global warming, these warming trends. Believe it or not, some corals can't handle warm water, so they die. But before I move on, there is one other thing I do like to talk about that's kind of cool are, of course, the sea anemones. And the sea anemones, as you well know if you've ever seen the movie Nemo, form a symbiotic relationship with clownfish. The next phylum of cnidarians we're going to talk about are the jellyfish, the true jellyfish. These are called scyphozoans. Scypho means cup, and of course, zo means animal, so these are cup like animals. Now, interestingly, these animals may have been around before the Cambrian. There's evidence going back maybe 600 million years that jellyfish have been around. 
even if that is an early date, they've definitely been around since the beginning of the Cambrian explosion. Now there's about 200 to 400 different species of jellyfish, depending on who you talk to, and they are known for their stinging tentacles. I've been stung by jellyfish. It is not pleasant at all. Some interesting facts about jellyfish. The largest jellyfish is called the lion's mane jellyfish. They're pretty big. They can be over six feet across in diameter. And for a while, it's been considered one of the longest animals on the planet. Most of us think that the great blue whale it's the longest animal on the planet, coming in at 110 feet long. But because jellyfish often have really long tentacles trailing behind them, they can actually rival a great blue whale, although that they have much less mass than a great blue whale, of course. But, as you're going to find out, the lion's mane jellyfish at over 100 feet long is not the longest animal on the planet, and no, it's not a blue whale either. The second interesting fact about jellyfish, they're 95% water. Now lately, jellyfish have been exploding in populations. And one of the reasons why is because of overfishing. Some fish eat smaller jellyfish. Well, what happens is as we've removed so many fish from the Earth's oceans, we've removed the natural predators of jellyfish. And as a result, jellyfish populations are exploding in many areas worldwide. Here's our third class of cnidarians called the hydrozoans. Hydro, of course, means water. These are the water animals. And hydrozoans are really unique. They superficially resemble a true jellyfish, the scyphozoans, but they're really different. And one of the reasons why they're really different is because these are actually colonial animals. They're made up of lots of different animals, polyps, living together, and each one kind of has a different function. One of the most well-known of these is, of course, the Portuguese man-o'-war. And they got their name from the Portuguese sailing vessels called the man-o'-wars. They had this air sac that comes up and floats on the surface so they have a they're wind driven throughout the ocean and behind them are long tentacles and you do not want to get stung by a portuguese man of war it will be very painful so this is a picture of one i saw washed up on the beach it was pretty crazy i saw tens of thousands of these one day washed up on the beach in north florida it's quite terrifying now another one that i also saw along the same beach about 10 years later is this little blue button and this is only an inch wide floating in the water now, you ready for the longest animal on the planet? It's a hydrozoan called a siphonophore. I think I said that right. It's 150 feet long. Now I saw on the web there were some people saying it was 120 meters long, but we're gonna go with a more conservative 150 feet, and that is far longer than a blue whale. And interestingly, this animal was only discovered in April of 2020. This is brand new science that we're able to bring to you right now. Kind of exciting. Now for the last class, these are the cubozoans, also known as the box jellies. They also superficially resemble jellyfish and the hydrozoans, but these are a whole nother class of cnidarians. And they get their name because they often look cuboidal in shape. What's the deadliest animal? Well, one of them is definitely the sea wasp. These are some of the most dangerous animals on the planet, and the fact that they have toxins that are so powerful they can kill a human in less than five minutes if untreated. And the reason why they have such powerful neurotoxins is because these animals are fragile. They hunt fish. They actually have eyes. And they can actively hunt down their prey. And some of them actually have true eyes, a lens and a retina. And their toxin is so powerful because when they sting a fish, they don't want that fish to struggle. They want it to die as fast as possible so it doesn't damage the cubozoan. Okay, well, there we are, and that's my introduction to Nidarians. I hope you enjoyed it.